So hi everybody, that is our that official. Was weird. Um, that is our official. So this is Tammy Hull and Joe Maldonado. We're, we're from Griffin's Claw, the School of Practical Magic. And we're, I'm so excited. This is like one of my favorite, favorite in the world topics. Tammy, um, who is a canine behaviorist, uh, and myself, body language on humans, um, are going to talk about how how the two kind of intertwine and affect. Today, we're gonna to talk about how they affect animals or dogs because that is specifically um, Tammy's specialty. Um, and we are both actually going to be teaching classes. Mine is in a few weeks on, um, and if I can ask everybody again to just um, mute your, your microphones there um, and your video cameras. Um, we're going to be, uh, mine is in two weeks and that's specifically on tying in intuition body language, our body language, and then body language of others around us. So whether they're human or animals, so it's going to be very interesting. Tammy's class is specifically being focused on dog body language and communicating in a way that they will understand. And that is actually March 25th of next year. So um, we're very excited about that. So Tammy, where do we begin talking about this body language? You and I have been doing this for eons. Uh that is true. Um, I mean, I started off actually taking courses from you uh, yes. in regard to body language. So, um, and I just kind of kept going from there and studied deeper into dogs. So yeah, there's, there's a lot connected with the way we communicate and the way we use our body um, when communicating with them. Yeah, I remember I was, I was down, I think it was post-surgery or recovery or something like that. And I was down for a few weeks and I picked up um, a study by Professor Amy Cuddy, who was um, a business, still is a business professor at Harvard. And she did a fascinating study on um, how our human language affects how um, people, whether they can get a job or not. So, you know, it, it just, I just found it so uh, yeah. intriguing. You know, like how you sit in front of your potential boss, you know, depends on whether actually, you know, part of it depends on whether they, they you know, have a favorable impression of you. And, it, and then it, it just, it's not just body language, but it's also voice intonations, how you carry yourself. And of course, if you have the right experience. But um, so what I did was I took all her information and I divided it into two parts, prey and predators. And I did it with animals. I did it with dogs and I did it with horses. This was years and years ago. I actually, I don't even remember what year it was, but um, Tammy and I worked on this together, um, you know, and it was, it was actually, it was a very fun project, you know, discovering how horses who are, you know, the prey, um, how they respond to body language versus how dogs doing the same pose who are the predators responded to that. And Tammy, I'm sure you've elaborated much on that now as being a, a canine behaviorist and working with all these varied dogs that you work with. I mean, have you expanded much on, on what we did years and years ago? Um, I would say I, um, I pick up a lot more um, observation wise and you have to you have to think of it also in that depending on the situation and what our response is, we're either prey or predator because we have both within ourselves. Yeah. And so where you come in with body language and such, you can present yourself as prey or predator. Um, yes. And that and that's your dog will react depending and accordingly to how you respond to situations. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's so many things that um, I find interesting to observe now that that I've been studying it longer. Even with my uh, seven month old kitten, I like to watch him and observe things that I never picked up before. And I thought it was really interesting yeah. how he is such a little predator and yeah. he's only He's seven months old and he's a cat, but he is a predator. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And I'm wondering, how do your dogs respond to him? Uh, they, it depends, um, again, um, on how he is acting and what he's doing. The kitten's not really scared of much, but when he starts to inter interact with the dogs inappropriately, uh -huh. my male dog will tell him to stop it. Right. Uh, and the kitten 
the kitten will bounce back away from him right and, and consider it and then he'll leave right so he responds well to him whereas the female doesn't doesn't tell him to leave her alone but he likes to mess with her and play with her and snuggle with her but if she's not in the mood she just gets up and walks away yeah and that's yeah. that's her response to him right so uh, right. yeah their responses are interesting i find i want to just pull up a slide um from you know one one episode here that we did um uh and this was actually you're not in this one tammy but this one is um you know the the power one a couple power poses so what i i will do in in my class is i will teach you what the power poses are power poses meaning you know you will be in charge or inflicting more dominant energy upon whether it's a dog or a horse or another person so so two of the poses that um you know that that i'll cover and there's much more than this one is the crossing of the arms over here um and the other one is hands on hips over here and you could see you know the the what how the horse's response horse again being you know the prey how the horses respond to this body language that the human is inflicting upon them um and i know that i'm not quite sure how many of um of, of dog pictures i have i have this one um which is you know just someone struggling with the dog and perhaps you can comment on this also but i mean just me noting her body language you know her shoulders are slumped um she doesn't you know have full control of her stance over here um her hands are forward and she's trying to pull her dog to walk with her and her dog was not a leash walker so she's having a problem with that so what i did and then maybe you can you can add to this um i corrected her her stance shoulders back which is a more authoritative pose not necessarily is it you know a pose that inflicts power it's just i am in charge you know i'm in charge of me i'm in charge of whoever else is around me and head up whereas over here it's kind of tilted a little bit more you can see on the side um, and what it resulted with is um, her dog following her. Now, one of the things that I used to do, and I don't know if you do this with your clients, is I used to have um, my clients put their arms behind them when they are when they have a leash in their hands, only because they're not struggling with this, you know, left hand, right hand, you know, uh, I gotta, I gotta get you in front of me, I gotta pull you to my side. So this was more of a neutral pose. So can you comment a little bit on the dog's body language and what kind of signals you see the dog sending to her on this, on this photo? The dog's conflicted and unsure what the owner wants, and it's totally much involving what you corrected within her but if you notice how the owner is facing the dog but yet she wants to go the other direction where she's trying to pull the dog but in the dog's mind the dog's very much confused by the owner's body language because it's like why are you facing me the opposite direction that you want to go Mm -hmm. and you're pulling me in one direction so the dog doesn't know that the owner wants to go behind her mm -hmm. all the dog is picking up is is the messages are conflicted and she's creating conflict mm -hmm. by trying to pull on the mm -hmm. dog mm -hmm. you see the dog has its way shifted back because when we try to use a leash to drag a dog that just creates that conflict and uncertainty and the dog doesn't trust her because she is giving so many conflicted uh, signals with her own body language. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the biggest flag to me is she's facing the wrong direction. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and then if you, if she turns about like you had her do, um, one, that creates more clarity with her own body language of, I would like to go this way. Yeah. And you wait for the dog to understand, oh, okay. And when the dog clicks in, you can feel that leash kind of give a little bit and create a little slack. Mm -hmm. And you can even start to step forward just one step to see if the dog will move with you and yeah. then begin to walk versus all this conflict and improper signaling to the dog. It, her communication is extremely confusing to that dog. Yeah. No wonder the dog tried to pull back like, I don't know what you want. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. But, um, and I, but I you remember, obviously don't know either. I remember that particular class, um, actually, and the dog would not go on the grass. That was that was part of the problem. And she was trying to pull the dog. You know, so the dog would come onto the grass and the dog was refusing. But when she turned yeah. around, you know, and did the appropriate on um, pointing this way, I want the dog to go this way with me, then it worked. But I, I know that this was a big problem with this big right. dog. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, that dog's big enough. It's like trying to drag a horse somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I have another slide in here. It's not going to happen. Um, I, I know. <laughs> so I thought this was kind of interesting. This is actually just um, a clip from a video that I found. And it was um, it was a canine police officer. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. A canine police officer. No, no, I said, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and his dog and a reporter was actually interviewing him because his dog had saved someone's life and um the reporter was not following the dog's body language which you know in the article you can't say it in this clip but perhaps you can comment a little bit more what's going on um this particular reporter was not paying attention the dog was you know focusing on a story and apparently reached out suddenly and the dog um, began to attack him. So, you know, in cases such as canine units or, or even just like regular or someone else's pets or dogs, what kind of body language um, would you suggest we should be looking at? You know, like, don't pet me, don't pet me, you know, like those kind of signals. So you know, a, a stranger comes up, what, what should that stranger be actually looking at? Um, I mean, I'm not sure if this is the same story that I'm remembering, because I think the one that I recall, the, the reporter might have even been gotten bit. That um, was a woman totally reporter. Yeah, that was a yeah, that. That's that was what I woman. thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so typically, if you watch a dog, they're going to give you signals like they'll turn away, and it may not be their whole body, they just may turn their head slightly mm -hmm. one side, you know, yeah. and look the other way. Yeah. That's called, they're avoiding the situation. They're trying to signal to you, you're making me uncomfortable. I don't want you to touch me. Yeah. Um, so you may see them do that. You may also see them kind of do what we call a whale eye, where they look with their head turned one direction, they'll look out the side of their, from the side of their eye, and, mm -hmm. and you'll see more of the white of the yeah. eye. Yeah. That also is them trying to signal, this is making me uncomfortable. And, and these may be milliseconds apart. It may appear to us because we're so much slower than them. Yeah. It may appear like they gave no warning. And you may not, unless you're aware of, of all the different signals, you may completely miss it. Yeah. So you may see them turn their head or body away from you. You may see that whale eye. You may see them kind of lick their lip real quick. Uh -huh. um, these are escalations. Uh, you're making me uncomfortable. And depending on the dog, whether it's fearful or whether um, it has other issues where it has reactivity issues, yeah. um, these may go, like I said, milliseconds. And the next one could be a bite. Some yeah. dogs will never go to that level. Yeah. Um, you know, because that's like one of the highest levels. Um, yeah. but, but there are some dogs that will feel threatened for whatever reason yeah. or conflicted um, and feel like you did not respect the body language and, and information they were giving you. So they feel, this is it. I'm like, it's game on, I'm gonna bite them. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So yeah. in the video that we were talking about with the reporter and the female, when yeah. I watched it, I'm like, that dog gave every flipping signal to yeah. that reporter. <laughs> and true. she still came in. The other thing is, they tend to come in over top of a dog, which that's not okay either, whether they yeah. think, oh, let me give them a kiss, let me give them a hug, or they just bring their hand over the dog's head or neck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's completely rude. I'm like, I never would greet a dog unless it's my own personal dogs. And even still, one of my personal dogs, I can't greet that way because she's so sensitive. Yeah. So yeah. coming over the top, even with your hand can create conflict and inappropriate body language to that dog. It, right. it thinks you're possibly a threat. 
yeah. depending on the state of mind and, and the uh, personality of that dog. Yeah. Yeah. So I always come in down low, down low on their shoulder or under the chest, but I don't greet a dog um, by reaching over top of it. Yeah. And, I, and a I lot just, of reporters, a lot of reporters do that. <laughs> well, I think a lot of strangers do that too. Oh, can I pet your dog? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is, is always yeah. no, because I have a service dog and I don't want anybody petting my service dog. But um, here's a slide here. And this is, this is my mini dachshund bear. Um, and yeah. we were just, and that's actually, you know, our, our colleague, um, Todd, that's, that's on the ground. And we were just, um, you know, trying to oh, expose yeah. her to different sounds like on a busy street so you know he's just sitting there with her and he says oh can you help us you know train um and acclimate this dog she says sure and she comes over and boom the hand goes right over the head and on the left side you see well this is mm -hmm. i'm not going near you and so he says he re he instructs her and he says okay so let's do it a little bit differently you're down down low which is good because she's off you know six inches off the ground and and he instructs her always put the hand under the chin once mm -hmm. you get the permission of the owner and it made such a huge difference i mean you could see on the slide on the right you know it's it was just it was incredible you know what what that one little little instance did and how it made I, her feel comfortable i would add one thing to this photo that she could help bear out a little more mm -hmm. and that's not to be facing her don't yes. face the dog you can you can inadvertently put too much energy on that dog uh, yeah. to where it feels uncon uncomfortable and, and still creating conflict. Yeah. And you have to watch, and I can't tell for sure. Uh -huh. Okay, bear's still back. Um, so where yeah, the she, lady's right in she front of her, bit, she, yeah. may inad she may inadvertently, without realizing it, she may bend over a little bit more and uh -huh. then not realize because bear so low to the ground she could then end up over bear with her head yeah you know and yeah. that matters because i'm not talking about just your hand being over them if yeah. you lean do you squat down and lean over and any part of your body is above that dog it can it can be uncomfortable yeah. depending on the dog yeah yeah absolutely and um i i couldn't find the videos that we've done because Tammy and I have worked at different shelters. Um, but this is just a still shot. It was at um, a wolf and wolf dog center um, that I was volunteering at. And it's just body language, like, like Tammy was saying, you know, do not face them. Um, my head is turned because at that point we've already become friends and things were cool, but I maintain my neutral body position, which is standing sideways. And I've done this. Um, my mistake, I have been to shelters in the past where um, you know, I just barreled in too quickly, you know, and head on, you know, straight at, at the dog that was um, in, you know, in, in the kennel and it just threw them through a loop. Um, so that I, you know, right away I did that, <laughs> like, okay, I get it, so sorry, apologies here. But I know that this position has worked really, really well with dogs that, um, or wolf dogs or wolves even that um, I am not familiar with, you know, and I'm, what I'm trying to do is just, you know, do an exchange of thoughts and an exchange of energy with them standing like that. And if they feel too confronted, you know, it just, it, every single time it ended up in, in crap. So this is kind of what you were talking about the, you know, not confronting them, um, I would think, right? I, I think so. You're kind of uh, kind of breaking up a little bit. So oh, I'm not sorry. catching every word. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> yes. I mean, so just agree with you're, me. You're, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah right. Your body language is your body language is uh, non-threatening to this uh, wolf because yeah. of the stance that you're taking. You're not you're not you know facing the the wolf dog. And he may, he or she, they may be, um, they may be more confident, but certainly yeah. I would say that they're uh, somewhat feral. Um, so you're yeah. helping the they dog work. out and allowing it to come in closer by yeah. just the fact that you 
have toned your energy way down mm -hmm. and you're being very soft with him. And if you do glance at the uh, animal, you have to think about making sure even your eyes are very soft. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and you're doing all of that in that, that photo. Right, right, absolutely. Um, here is, um, can you see the switch in slides? I'm not sure, I think, I think it's switched over. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. Okay, so it, this is just, you know, two other power poses and how they impact prey and predator. Now, you know, when I say prey and predator, I'm not just talking animals, um, because I also see people, humans, prey and predator. Some people are going to be very overbearing, very in control, very dominant, very alpha, and others are going to be very insecure. They're going to be timid. They're going to be shy. They're not going to want to cooperate. So again, you know, when, when I divide prey and predator, I'm not just thinking animals, I'm, I'm also thinking people, um, you know, how people in general, you know, would respond. And so the slide on the left, that's you, Tammy, years and years and years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And that is a power pose. It's, you know, her legs are equally set apart, um, you know, equal stance here on the hips. But what she's doing is she's actually folding her arms, which is I'm in control, you know, I, you know, the, the, it, it can mean a, a number of things, but in this instance, it was, it was, I am in control. And you could see what happens. The horse was happily trotting around. And as soon as she went into this power pose, um, the horse started to go on a turn. And then I have other slides afterwards um, that the horse just, it, he just kept running, you know, around in his, in his ring that, that he was at. And one of the, the, the main factors when we were doing these studies was that, you know, you have to really clear your mind. So, you know, you're, you're not projecting, I'm going to kill you, or I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> you know, you're just, you're, just you're, you're staying as clear minded as you can, because we were strictly focusing on body language. And then um, the slide on the right, and you see the arrow, you know, pointing to the lady. Now, she doesn't have arms behind her. She actually has arms down on the side, um, but she has shoulders back. And, you know, she is enacting an I am in charge um, kind of pose to the dog, to the greyhound, not the fuzzies in the back, but this, this Italian greyhound right here. And look at the communication, you know, so it's like attention. What do you want me to do? Um, I mean, that that was again, that was done. Um, hmm, I was done about within a year. I think we did dogs and horses, um, if I remember correctly. Um, so, again, you see how being, you know, your your position shoulders back. So I remember reading a study that they did on shoulders back and shoulders forward and shoulders back when you put your shoulders back. And I think it's a it's a two minute time limit after two minutes, your body actually um, projects more testosterone, which to the animals, they can pick that up and they're they're picking up oh they're a little bit more in power in control here so one of the big things in in power poses is shoulders back um so she's got shoulders back equal stance on the legs that's really important too so just like tammy's doing here on the left because it's equal stands feet apart equal weight on both so now when you begin to shift your weight you know on, on one leg or you know or the other leg then your your body language is not balanced your energy is not balanced and they pick it up immediately um here again is this is a power pose in action <laughs> so arms up you know arms up italian greyhounds again are over there it um as you can see um, no sound was made, but she's advancing wide step towards the dog, arms up, and the dog looks up at her. And it's it's really interesting. I think, you know, when you look at different dog breeds, because you look at the two, the peers in the back, they are not at all <laughs> you know, influenced by what's going on only a few feet away from them. They're just like sleeping and relaxing. Yet the Italian greyhounds who have more energy seem to be more um, you know, more focused on what's going on. Do you have any other comments on, on, on this, Tammy, on this slide? Um, I was going to say, uh, first, regarding the previous slide with the horses, that mm -hmm. those power poses can be very helpful for those owners that maybe have um, more confident or, and or more powerful 
dogs mm -hmm. be, because if you can't project the uh, image of being in charge, then the dog's going to take that position. Yeah. And even an insecure dog will do that. Yeah. Uh, an insecure dog can take the, the lead position if you don't. So those power poses can be very helpful in shifting the energy of an owner that's having mm -hmm. difficulty um, kind of leading their dog. Yeah. Um, the other one with the uh, peers and the Italian greyhounds, mm -hmm. um, I would almost bet that those Italian greyhounds, not only are, do they have a higher energy, energy level, level yeah. <laughs> but I would bet they're also uh, somewhat insecure. So a big move like that with the mm -hmm. hands up, one, they're going to respond quickly to movement because that's what dogs do. Yeah. They catch movement much faster than a human. Yeah. And so they're going to see those hands go up and they're going to be like, what's that? Yeah. You know, what, what do you what are you intending to do yeah. in that picture? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and that brings up another part of your classes, which is intention. Yes. You need to hold the proper intention of what you want yeah. to happen. Yes. Um, but yeah, those, those peers aren't concerned because peers are large guardian dogs. And they're like, <laughs> unless you're a bear, um, you yeah, know, no. it's like, okay. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think we have, do we have anybody that's, is there a question in the chat? Um, okay, no, someone was just checking out because they had to leave soon. Um, we're going to be covering a lot of that stuff um, there in, in my class and Tammy is going to be covering a good bit of it of how, you know, dogs respond to that too. Uh, I think another, another really important thing um, just in communication is uh, lang like not language, but intonations, you know, of, you know, I'm sure you've, you, the people that are on this call or will be listening to it have worked with trainers um, who, you know, are, say, oh, when someone walks in the door, don't have them talk in a high pitched voice, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, because that's going to get them more excited, you know, so you want to assume a more neutral pose, you know, relaxed pose, let the dog do its thing, you know, and so on. But I think voice intonations are really, really key. Um, you know, I, yeah, I didn't do too many studies with that, but I had done some in some of the classes that I taught. And it made such a huge difference um, when, you know, there was more of a, a harshness or a brashness, you know, because it was almost intimidating to the, like you mentioned, some dogs are insecure. So that would just, you know, tail would go under and the dogs would go down. And then when the same owner would lift the voice up in a little higher pitched voice, the, the insecure dog would, you know, oh, Oh, okay. I'm, I'm not that bad. So are, are you going to cover um, intonations to like, you know, voice voices and stuff like that? Uh, there's so much I could cover, but it's only an hour. So, <laughs> I know. I know. and sometimes it's just where, where does the butterfly take me? Um, but I mean, intonations are important. Um, if you think about um, tension and um, you know, I've talked in the past about you don't want tension on your leash and this and that. Well, what is a high pitched voice? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you broke up. Are you still there? Oh, you sound so funny. I'm <laughs> getting like humming. <laughs> voice is tension on the vocal cords. Oh, that tension is going to say, yeah, your video is frozen on my side. I don't know if that's me or you. Uh, there you are. My internet connection now. is unstable. I just got my official message. It's unstable. <laughs> so, oh. I'm sorry. Could you repeat um, what you said? Because I need to um, When talking about like leash work with dogs, um, trainers will talk about uh, tension on the leash. You know, you don't want tension in certain situations. Um, you don't want, really, you don't want tension at all on the leash. So what, what is a high-pitched voice? A high-pitched voice is created by tensing our vocal cords. So it's another type of tension. And yeah. then dogs can pick up on that. So when we come up and we're like, hey, 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 
to do that, I have to create tension here. And so when the dog hears that, they're like, what are we tense about? You know, and they're looking around. What do I need to take care of? Because you're tense. Yes. Excellent point. You know, I never thought of tensing up vocal cords. I never Mm -hmm. thought of it. I just, you know, I thought it was the the pitch of the voice that was... I mean, it's well, a I don't know about, me, but you know, <laughs> so. I don't know about you, but when I hear a really high pitched squeaky sound, like somebody's got, oh my goodness, I love their dog. I just want to claw their eyeballs out. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, stop that. I think my ears are bleeding. Um, yeah, so, yes. I know. I know what you mean. It's, it's annoying and it's tension and, yeah. and dogs are going to dogs are going to respond to any sort of tension differently if it's a dog is more dominant they're going to be like okay i got this what are we what are we tense about if it's an insecure dog they're going to melt into the floor like oh my goodness you're tense what's going on now yeah is something coming to kill us so yes it's another type of tension so the best thing would be yes with intonations to keep a more neutral voice because intonations matter and it matters in the human world um we just don't think about it yeah. but dogs will reflect that back to us and yeah. show us if we pay attention well you know it, so it, it, many minute things that they will still i think you froze again but yeah, you're yeah, back yeah, yeah, it's a, but yeah, I think, um, you know, what Tammy and I are saying, you know, my, my class is a little bit more in depth. It's two days, um, not two full days. It's like two, two hour days. Um, we, I broke it up that way so that I don't, um, you know, put anybody to sleep too long and too fast. But, um, I think between taking Tammy's class and understanding, you know, the dog responds in this manner, it means, and then taking, you know, my, my course, you know, when you do this this is what it means you know i think i think you guys are going to be really set because we present it's the same message we do the same thing but it's to it's my perspective as far as a human is concerned what you should be doing and then tammy's perspective you know from the dog the the dog is responding like this dog is confused the dog is blah 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 and i think you know regardless of whether you have a young puppy Um, whether you have an older dog, whether you have, you're training a service dog, you know, your, your body language, your intonation, everything about you, they're reading you head to toe. And I think it's just so, so important. Um, we're just about out of time on the recording. We do have a couple questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop recording and, um, we can address the questions. And if you have any other questions, we can address those now. For the recording part, Tammy, thank you so much for joining me and also for your dogs. You know, I know you're on a dog appointment right now and you got two puppies <laughs> in the back with you. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to put everybody else, um, you know, the, the recording part on hold and then we'll go back to taking questions. Thank you, everybody.